All right, starting to see some folks log in and get going. We realize it's a nice uh, evening to be telecommuting, right, guys? So thank you guys for joining us this evening. Um, first, want to say welcome to everybody who joined us tonight. We're Focus Real Estate um, and just wanted to say welcome. Um, and kind of what we're uh, chatting about tonight and the reason that we're hosting this webinar um, about how to buy and how to sell, most importantly, and then make your purchase and not end up on the street or end up homeless. The reason that we're talking about that is that's the most common thing that people talk to us about, or the most common objection that we get as real estate agents from people. We talk to people every day, and what we're hearing constantly is, we'd really like to make a move, but because the inventory is so slim, we're afraid to put our, mark, our house on the market, fearing that we'll sell it quickly as everyone knows it's a very good seller's market and then not be able to find something. So we kind of want to address those fears and as easy it is for us as real estate agents to say, oh, by the way, you know, if everybody would just start acting and putting their property on the market, we would actually have more inventory. <laughs> so people would make that step over. And, and hopefully what we can do here this evening is share with you some of the success stories that we've had, some different strategies for making this work for you um, that we can make you feel more comfortable about making this a successful, easy process for you and hopefully take as much stress out of it as possible. So as we're beginning, welcome Sue and welcome Lydia and thanks, Mark for joining us. I want to introduce our presenters. First of all, my name is Randall Engelman. I am the owner and team leader at Focus Real Estate. And we also have with us tonight, Eric Way and Bonnie Chiquetto. And I'd like to offer the, the floor to them to say hello. Um, Randall, real quick, actually. So it doesn't look like our slides are advancing at the moment. We're still on the welcome screen in terms of what you're sharing right now. Thank you. Yep. There you go. All right. Go ahead, buddy. Okay, hi, I'm Bunny Chiquetto. Um, I live in Jamaica Plain and I've been a realtor in Jamaica Plain since 2001. And I'm really looking forward to sharing um, our stories with you of our successes, strategies of how to buy and sell a property on the same day. Thank you for joining in. I'm Eric Way. I'm a realtor here with Focus as well. Um, I've been with Focus now a little over two years. Um, and I, as well, have really enjoyed helping buyers and sellers alike, uh, as well as people doing the move at the same time. So uh, looking forward to chatting with you all tonight about our experiences. Great. Thanks, Bunny. Thanks, Eric. Also wanted to point out that Bunny and Eric are both realtors, as well as myself and everyone in our office. And what that means, and kind of giving you a little bit of a word, or a little bit of a story behind some lingo, right? So I think everybody refers to anybody that's got a real estate salesperson license as a realtor. There is a little difference in you. As you can see, realtor is capitalized there. We're all members of the uh, National Association of Realtors, the Massachusetts Association of Realtors, um, and GREB, which is the Greater uh, Boston Area um, Association of Realtors as well. And what that means is that we practice by as with a higher standard and have to adhere to the code of ethics outlined by the National Association of Realtors and how that benefits you guys in the process. So what we'll be discussing tonight, and we'll be discussing all these topics, um, most yeah. importantly, yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Not you know what it is, is I have two screens open and I'm advancing at one place and not the other. Oh, just kick me under the table. All right. Just kick me under the table. What we're going to be discussing tonight is where do you want to be? First and most important question, where do you want to be? Second, understanding your financials. So that's a big um, obstacle to get through to understanding how we can help you bridge that gap between the current ownership that you have and then your, your following uh, purchase and next, next purchase and ownership there. Uh, getting the timing right, understanding what some of the obstacles are for timing, developing a strategy to help you get you where you want to be, and then talking about some of the pros and cons and strategies that we're using, whether you are uh, selling first or making the decision to purchase your next home first. So um, one of the first questions that we always ask our clients is where do you want to be? Why are you making this move? Uh, is it because you need more space? Maybe you're, you know, that two bedroom condo is just too small for you now. And with the little ones coming along the way, maybe you need a single family home. 
Um, on the same vein, you know, sometimes it's about schooling, right? So do you need to be in a different school district? Is there a new job that you're moving for? Um, is there something else that, that's triggering this, this desire to move? And so we really try to focus on these kind of essential fundamental questions because sometimes it's really about just breaking it down to that. Uh, we get bogged down sometimes in the, process in terms of the details of how to get to, to this move when really we just lose sight of that end goal. And so I know Randall has a story about some clients that we worked with last year that kind of went through this process. And so uh, why don't you share that story with us, Randall? Uh, thanks, Eric. Uh, yeah, it's actually really fun. I often joke about it being um, uh, just really sitting down and being intentional with my clients and saying, what do you really want out of this process? What does your next home look like for you? Because a lot of people are like, just find me a home in this price range, in this geographic location, it'll stretch it out really far. But what we really try to do is hammer down really close. And uh, last year, I happened to have a, um, a client call me and say, Randall, we want to sell our condominium that we live in. We bought a, a multifamily investment property that we need to get rid of. And we need to buy a single family home because the, the COVID situation is becoming a real problem with living, um, educating our kids from home, daycare at home, um, us all working from home. We need to change. We have to just, and it was a very, I could tell it was a very emotional reaction. So what we did through some um, intense conversations was really discover where do they really want to be? And what we discovered through that was well, we bought that, that investment property not to be an investment, but we really wanted to move into it and we really want to renovate that house. And we really wanted to just get rid of our condo and make that transition into that, that investment property and make that our home. That was our dream. And I said, well, why don't we first see if we can make that happen for you before we go through this drastic measure of selling everything, buying something new and, and really turning your life upside down. And what we found was using some of the strategies that we'll share with you here tonight, we were able to work with their mortgage broker, make sure that they were um, qualified to just make that transition, make that sale, and also have enough money left over that they can do the renovations that they wanted to that. And that was a huge success story for us. So I really loved like doing that, although talking myself out of several transactions, you might think seems kind of silly uh, for a person that works on commission. But really, our, our goal here is to lead our clients into what's right for them. Um, and that was really satisfying, having a, having a conversation with that client just like a week ago. And they're saying, you can't even believe how happy we are being in the position we're in. And really, you helped us get to that. That was really satisfying for me. So, so that's what we really pride ourselves on. And I think Randall touched upon a really good point there is that, you know, everyone's situation is going to be different. So what we really like to do is to make sure that we are catering this process to your needs and trying to understand what your end goals are. Indeed, it's, it's actually really interesting because everybody's just a little different, just like every house is unique, right? <laughs> right. And every financial situation is different. Totally. So what we really encourage you to do when you're planning on buying a house and selling your house is you need to buy a house first, right? So you need to understand your financials. Most people take the proceeds from their sale to buy a house, but you need to be qualified to buy the house first. So in this competitive market, we recommend that you talk to your lender to see whether you can make an offer to purchase without having a contingency to sell. So your offer will be competitive and hopefully that will help you purchase that house. So there is a few different ways that people can go about doing this. One, you can touch your lender to see whether you can afford to have two mortgages until your house sells. You can also talk to, to see whether you have enough equity in your house so you could get a, if you, you could get a equity bridge loan. And then you could also talk to your uh, investor to see whether there's any finances in your portfolio that you could possibly borrow against or tap into. And um, if these options don't work for you, um, there's another way that we can go about it. What we have worked with a lot of um, sellers is, is that we have them put their house in the market. And when they're accepting the offers, we request that you get a a rent back. And what that means is that you can sell your house and then stay in your house up to 59 days. And what the rent back, what it, the benefit is, is that you get the cash from the sale, you still stay in your house, and then you can make your net, then you can make your purchase. Mm -hmm. But what we encourage you to do is 
talk to your lender. Everybody's situation is different and they can go over the different options that will be available to you. Yeah, it's really interesting when we start digging into those financials. And, and just so you guys know, we're not people that see all your financial information. There's some people that just like to, to overshare and share with all of and share with us all of that information. But really, that's talking to your mortgage professional to make sure that you can understand what's going on there. And actually, with today's rates being so low, a lot of people go, oh, well, there's no possible way I can afford to make the purchase without the sale of my home. But the, what they don't realize is the lending has gotten so inexpensive and they have so much equity in the current home that they have that it actually makes it quite easy to get through that obstacle that's that sale but really what we really pride ourselves on is really sitting down with each and one of our clients to say what is your unique situation how can we help you and strategize with different ways and we'll talk bunny has touched a little bit on a couple of those um, strategies but we'll talk about a couple more as we move forward and I'm sorry, I should have advanced a little bit more, but talking to your mortgage um, professional to talk about your, whether it is a home equity line of credit, which Bunny touched on, uh, perhaps a bridge loans. Uh, uh, the further we get away from the previous uh, financial crisis, the more options that we're seeing by banks provide to us through a bridge loan. Bunny, how long has it been since we've seen a bridge loan? A very long time. Those are starting to come up and making the buying process a little bit easier for homeowners right now. Yeah. Um, also looking at your 401k or, or perhaps even a low down payment option, depending on, on what's right for you. So once you understand where you want to go and what your financial situation is, the next thing is really getting your timing right. And so what we like to do with our clients is to pull out a calendar and to back and to understand if there are any key milestones that you're really trying to hit. Are you starting a new job at some point? Um, are you going to be moving uh, to move into a new school district? Are you relocating? Um, are there vacations that you want to make sure that you're trying to avoid? Mm -hmm. So it's really about laying out a process that backs into those key dates um, mm -hmm. to make sure that we are hitting that key timing for you. And so what this really kind of just illustrates is that everyone's story is going to be a little bit different, right? And so one thing that we also try to do sometimes is we try to time the market. Um, and so holistically speaking, if you want to get the most money for your sale, you try to sell in the spring. That's, you know, everyone knows it's a hot spring market, and so that's the best time to sell, right? So conversely, uh, the best time to buy is actually in the fall or in the winter. In these particular times, inventories might be a little bit lower, but there's also a lot less buyer activity, and so there's going to be less competition for you. And so you're able to get a house typically with a, with a lower price. Um, and so... All that kind of good lines. Um, we're not always able to do the, the things that we want to, but you know, <laughs> what we try to do is we want to make sure that we're doing the right timing for you, right? So ultimately, when is the best time? It's when it's right for you. And so that's what we really try to stress is we're catering this process to you and what your ultimate goals are. And if you're doing that buy and sell process, Eric, at the same time, basically you're working in a parallel market. So yeah. although you might be buying in the spring and selling in the spring, you might be paying um, a tad bit more of a premium in the spring market. It's not a huge percentage, by the way. Um, you're also selling at that that um, larger percentage. So you know it, it, when you're when you're working in one season to make that buy and sell, you're really working in a parallel market. So you get the advantages of both. So. So thank you for that. And so really the next for us then, it's what, we, I don't know, this is what I love and I can tell you my, our team loves this, is developing a strategy, right? So now our next step is knowing what your timing looks like and where what your dream home looks like, where you want to be next is developing a strategy to get there. So not only just waiting for stuff to come on the market, but we might be talking about developing a strategy where we're knocking on some doors and saying, hey, uh, I have a client that is very interested in making a purchase. They've identified this as a home that they could possibly um, call their next home. And would you have any interest in making a move? Um, we've also done outreach through, through the mail working with um, other real estate agents in the in the neighborhood um, who may have coming soon, watching all of our coming soon activities, watching private sales, watching all of that stuff on your behalf to make sure that we can get you into that next home. And as Bunny was saying earlier, developing a strategy that works really well for you, you're not alone there if 
you need to access the equity in your home to make that next purchase. Most people, their down payment is in the equity of their home. So we've got different ways of getting that for you, whether Bunny touched on um, getting a bridge or not getting a bridge loan, but getting a um, home equity line of credit, which is free to you. And you only have to pay interest on that loan if you actually use it like a credit card, right? Um, and it's usually no closing costs for something like that. So you don't use it. It's no, no cost to you. And that helps make your down payments and, and other fees along the way. But also, working with a strategy guys to make sure that we understand the best way to move forward. Now we're going to touch next a little bit before we get into a little bit more information on buyer services and strategizing that way, um, getting more into whether you would like to um, make that, make that purchase first or make that sale first and deciding on which path is right for you. Right. So I would like to talk about the benefits of buying a house before selling your house. And that's actually our goal here is to buy a house so you can and sell your house at the same time. And the benefits of buying the house first is that you, you have security that you know where you're going to go. We know right now with the market, we can sell your house and we market it properly. We can do wonderful with it. But the challenge is, is finding the right house for you. So when I first meet with families that are going to be making this move, I say, all right, we are going to get out there. We're going to look, we're going to look for the house for you. But while we're doing this, get your house ready for sale. Because as soon as we put, put a property under agreement, we want to be ready to sell your house right away. Because that is our, as I said, is our goal is that we have a, the house is ready to go on the market. As soon as we have the purchase and sale, we, we put your house on the market and we try to, that way we can coordinate the closings. We can, we now know what date that we have to buy the house in. So we try to tell ourselves and curb the sale that we put your house under agreement and have a sale date the same day as your purchase date. So that is, so doing that, looking for the house first, you have security of where you're going to go. You can be a little bit more relaxed about the process because you'll not be worried about if you sell your house, where am I going to land? Mm -hmm. And it gives you the opportunity to get your house ready for sale. Yeah, Randall, I think um, we're, we're talking about buying before selling now, which is the previous slide. So <laughs> <laughs> you're dancing too quickly on me. Yeah, you're going so fast there. So that, yeah. the goal is to, to sell your house in the morning and buy the house in the afternoon. So all those financial products that we talked about, you never, you don't have to exercise them. Those are set in place so that you can get pre-approved to buy a house without having the contingency to sell. I know there are a lot of different um, terms that we're using here, but I think you can see where our strategy and methodology is going with this. Mm -hmm. One of the interesting things that I've always enjoyed watching everyone do in the office when it comes to working with their clients that want to buy first, whether they utilize some of the strategies we use later financially or not, is they go out and they find their home first. Like you said, Bunny, they're really comfortable with the process because, again, not becoming homeless. But one of the nice things that we do is we don't wait until you make that home purchase before we start acting on the home sale, right? Bunny and Eric are unbelievable at helping our clients put their homes together so they look amazing, right? And what we do is we'll go in and start taking those pictures, get your floor plans, do the videos, get the aerial photographs, get everything together. MLS sheet is okayed by you. It's got a great description. We've got all the details. You find that perfect house, and you want to try to do what Bunny says you sell a house in the morning and buy in the afternoon, we also refer to that as a coordinated close that we can then get your house on the market like that. We just push play, schedule open houses, get a calendar ready for you so we know exact, you know exactly what's happening and when. And when you are the seller, you get to name a little bit of more of your own, um, uh, you can kind of name your own your own contingencies and your own timing so that you can say, well, what I'm really looking for is a March 17th closing because I'm closing on my new house on that same day so I can match those dates up. And we can have everything ready for you 
way in advance. So we're not starting from scratch at the time that you find your home that we start looking at marketing. So we like to look at that next step in the future. An additional benefit to that is we can often be looking at this as some off-market sale opportunity if you wanted to go that way, um, where there's a lot of buyers out there looking and we could say to them, listen, we have an off-market opportunity. This is, the, this is the property. This is what the seller's dream price is. There's no negotiation. And we can actually help you secure something in the, for the future for when you find your home, given that um, big lead time uh, as, you're look, as you're searching for your purchase. So there's a whole bunch of different ways to go about this, which is kind of super fun for us. So <laughs> funny. I think you had a recent sale at Hillcroft, didn't you, that where you were actually able to do so, where you actually had everything in place ready to go for the sale um, in parallel with, with the purchase. Right? right. I do. And actually, I, I love this part because... When I meet with, you know, I meet with the sellers, I try to impress upon them. Once you put your house under agreement, you're going to be moving within 60 days. So <laughs> it's really great when, you, when you're when you looking to buy a house to start the process. You know, I can help you. We help you with movers, with stagers, you know, getting your house ready for market. So, yes, um, I've done that multiple times. And as I said, as soon as we sign the purchase and sale for the house that you're buying, the same day we press the button at five o'clock and your house goes live and we're getting it ready for sale. So it is coordinating. It's just not overnight. It's when we first start the conversation. We're not only talking about your, your, what you're going to buy. We're going to we're working through all the steps to help you get your house ready for sale. Totally. Great. And Thanks. Every situation is different, right? Yeah, and yes. So Bunny was able to help her clients in a coordinated fashion. Um, I actually have a similar story where it's buying before selling as well. So I had clients who were living in a two bed condo and, you know, bursting at the seams with two kids. And so basically needed to find a single family home or a larger space. And so they knew they wanted to be a dude for the school district. So we spent some time finding them their dream home. Um, they fortunately had the finances to be able to put a down payment. They got a pre-approval without having to sell their home. And so once they closed on their new home and were able to fully move out, we stepped in, we had stagers there, we had cleaners, um, you know, contractors to get everything fixed up. And so we did what we could to get their home in tip top shape mm -hmm. to get them the highest dollar we could in the spring market, which mm -hmm. was fantastic. Exceeding expectations when it comes to that. We that is for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that guys. And I just want to remind everybody that's here with us today that if you have any questions, we'll be taking some questions in a bit, but feel free to put them in the question and answer. So if there's something here that we can um, address for you as we're moving along, feel free to do so, but we'll give an opportunity for everybody to answer questions at the end. Selling before buying. All right. So Bunny talked a little bit about buying before selling. Um, when you're not in a position to be able to do so, so if you're not able to qualify for a mortgage or any of those specific vehicles that Bunny talked about in terms of tapping into the equity of your home, you might have to sell before buying. And so this actually uh, avoids some risk in terms of um, making it more of a financial, financially sound process. So what you do is we, we do all we do to get your home ready for sale. Um, we get top dollar for it and you can tap into that full equity to be able to then look for homes on the, on the, on the back end um, to, to, you know, to have that time to look for, for the house of your dreams. And so, you know, it gives you a little bit more flexibility on the back end to be able to, to have that time to look mm -hmm. for a home. But, mm -hmm. you know, but it does also involve a little bit of complexity where you might have to do two moves, right? So I did have some clients as well that, um, that had the ability to be able to move into some temporary mm -hmm. housing. And that's not the best solution for everyone. You know, we understand that moving is stressful. And so having to do two moves is not always the best ideal situation. But for them, they felt that, you know, being able to, to sell their home and to look at their own pace mm -hmm. for the next place that they wanted to move into was the best strategy for them. Right. Everybody has a different path. Everybody does. And so we were able to get them into temporary housing for a couple of months. And then, you know, in that process, we were able to find them their home of their dreams in the, in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's the process that they went through and you know, that's selling before buying. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, 
we're trying to strategize in as many different ways to keep you from having to move twice. Some people don't mind that. And sometimes it just really works best because, well, you know, some people's houses that they live in shouldn't be shown to maximize value why they're still living in them. Um, so that tends to work really well. And most people are very uh, realistic and, and aware of, of that. Um, but also one of the things that we like to do with clients who are homeowners now and looking to be moved into their new ownership position later is evaluate the market for what they're looking for, right? So if we're stepping across the threshold to say, we're going to list our house now, we have to access our equity to make our next purchase. But let's, before we do that, really evaluate the market and what's happened in the past so we can understand what to anticipate in the future, right? So if I'm really looking for this kind of a 3,000 square foot four bedroom home with this size of a lot in this geographic location, first thing we like to do is sit down with our clients and say, okay, that's what you're looking for. Let's see how many things have sold like that in the last 12 or 24 months. Mm -hmm. Do a little bit of an analysis to find out how many of those come on over the time that they have to look and purchase a house and decide if this is a gamble worth taking for them. And sometimes what we find is, oh, well, about four of the kinds of homes that we're looking for sell every month, then we feel much more confident working with you to help you find that home when we know this is a common commodity. Whereby if we find out that the kind of home you're looking for, only two of them come on a year, then it's probably the best idea to utilize Eric Way's strategy with his last clients. Let's get your home on the market. Let's get it sold. We can cross our fingers and hope that we can find that house and use every tool we have in our arsenal to get there. But it's probably likely that you're going to end up getting some temporary housing while you're waiting for that dream home to come along. So depending on what your, your situation is. We can tell a little bit more about a couple of stories here, but we don't want to do this presentation without also addressing buyer representation um, and talking a little bit about the importance of working with a skilled buyer's representative when you're looking to make your home purchase so that you can understand um, what's going on uh, on the, on the buy side as well. So when you go to make that purchase, um, you want to make sure that you're working with a very skilled um, buyer's representative. And we have a lot of fun with it. And we talk about having a 29 point checklist to, you know, befriend the, um, the seller's agent of the property that you're most interested in. So we can make sure your property gets accepted to a whole bunch of other strategies. So if you guys would like to uh, chime in and chat a little bit about buyer representation and how the, important that is. Sure. I think one of the most important things as, you know, as agents, um, we're representing both sides. And so as a buyer's agent representative, um, we want to make sure that we do everything we can to get your offer accepted, right? right? That is the end goal for you. So, you know, some of those things that Randall talked about in terms of making sure that we're building good rapport and a good relationship with that seller's agent, um, as well as all the tools that, you know, Nether A. Mark talked about in their buyer's representation, uh, you know, presentation in terms of, you know, those, those love letters, um, you know, to, to get, to get a little bit of, uh, you know, connection, emotional connection with the sellers, um, as well as, you know, all the different levers that we can do to, in terms of putting together a competitive offer. Right. You know, um, and we don't want to scare you, but finding <laughs> the right house is, is challenging because there's so much competition out there and finding the right when people find the right house as a buyer agent, we've usually been working with them for quite some time. So we know it's the right house of them. And then our next challenge is, is how are we going to get the offer accepted? <laughs> because it's so competitive, you know, you, and we know, uh, we know what our competition is. So we work with you as best we can to get, have your offer be competitive. And what, and we know that if it's, we'll say dropping the home inspection, dropping the mortgage contingencies, those are big risks for people to take. And we are fully aware of that. And I'm, our goal is to represent you and have the best outcome for you for this home ownership throughout throughout the years so that you're going to live there. So if it's a pre if it's a home inspection, we talk to the the seller's agent and say, would you be open to doing a pre inspection? And what that means is that we have an inspection, a home inspection before you make your offer to purchase. So you know what you're buying and you know what 
price you're going to go in at and you know what you're looking at if you have to have any future, future repairs done. Um, we work with trusted mortgage brokers. We, it's not for everybody, but some people do have the uh, capability of dropping their mortgage contingency. If the, we get a guarantee from the lender to say that this is a salt, this is a salt, we are solid, you can do that. So our job is to fill out the whole situation when you're buying the house and, and really create a strategy that we're going to get your offer accepted. Well said, buddy. <laughs> It's a very interesting market. It's a very dynamic market. And so kind of working with someone to help you also, as far as a buyer representation goes, um, working with one agent to kind of massage this process all the way together to where they can also coordinate your dates, right? So working with somebody that is representing on the buy and the sell side so that you can make sure you're matching your dates appropriately, not just the closing date, but sometimes some of the contingency dates and that kind of stuff to make sure that we're protecting your interests all the way through is super important just because we want to make this as stress-free for you as possible and be as uh, transparent about what's going on as possible as well. And you know, Wendell, we actually haven't talked about our the, how we have we work as a team. I think that I will I to want to do a little of this. But my <laughs> success has been with the team that I work with. I have been working with the same mortgage brokers some of them for 20 years, um, attorneys, some of them, most of them for 20 years. So I know that they have my client's best interest at hand. And in that end, they're like clockwork the way that they put the transaction together. So that is what experience realtors bring to, the, bring to you. Yeah. yeah, it's so important, like Bonnie said, to have a good team working behind you. And you know, the people and the resources that we work with, yeah. they make it happen. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. I was actually, we were chatting a little bit. We're protecting, our, we're protecting the financial end of, of our buyers and ourselves because we know that that is, that's really one of the most important components of our job. Definitely. Yeah, and we're always looking for feedback from our clients too when we're making these recommendations and referrals to them because we want to make sure they're getting the very best service possible and uh, and making sure that they're protecting their interests. And, and that's super duper important. When you're working with a really good mortgage broker, it's kind of a no brainer that things are gonna work be unless something dramatic happens in your life where you lose a job or something like that happens midstream, just please don't go out and buy a new car in the middle of transactions. Anyway. Yeah, we'll let you know what you can and cannot buy. <laughs> they'll, they'll keep you posted on that. Um, but as long as you're steady through the process, it's just a couple of months. Um, we know that that uh, our pre-approvals and our, our, uh, our representation through these other uh, ancillary services that we have through mortgage and, and uh, home inspection and uh, attorneys are, are very, very solid. So. And I think another thing that we really try to do is we try to lay out the steps of what's going to happen so we try to avoid any surprises and let you know what the, it's a linear process and we walk you through every single step indeed indeed and since we're talking about that mortgage um uh brian um asked about what is a mortgage contingency would you like to address that really quick for brian what is a mortgage so mortgage contingency when you're well, when most people are buying a property they're getting a they're getting a mortgage. So the mortgage contingency is that it's like a home inspection contingency. The sale is contingent upon you getting a mortgage. So um, when you're buying a house, you have to uh, provide uh, pre-approval from a lender saying that you've been pre-approved for a mortgage. Um, and if you're going to buy it with cash, you have to uh, show a uh, proof of funds. But for the mortgage contingency, you do a pre-approval. And then there is a period once your property, once your property gets accepted, then your the next step is that you have to get a mortgage commitment. And the mortgage com commitment, um, you have to have a purchase and sale agreement. You have to generally have to have an appraisal. And once you have in this from the pre-approval department, it goes into an underwriting department where they comb a little bit finer into what your finances are. And um, that process is a three-week process from when you make your um, mortgage application. And once you have that mortgage commitment, the bank has committed to giving you the mortgage. So that is, uh, that is the mortgage commitment. Because unless you're 100% certain that you're gonna get your mortgage, most people do keep that contingency in place. Because without that contingency, you run the risk of losing your purchase and sale money, which is generally 5% of the purchase price of the house. Yeah. So typically, so that, go ahead. 
I was just going to say, like Bunny was saying, it's just a protection that we put in place for you as the buyer to make sure that you are guaranteed a mortgage. Because if you need that mortgage in order to make that purchase, um, if like Randall was saying before, you know, God forbid you lose your job or some sort of financial burden comes upon you where you aren't able to meet your mortgage commitment, um, then that contingency is a protection for you in place so that you can get all your deposit money back without having to move forward. Right. Has that has it ever happened that you got to a mortgage contingency and you had to um, you had to terminate the transaction because a client could not get a mortgage contingency? They could not get their mortgage. I think Randall, in the twenty one years I've been selling during the financial crisis, somebody lost their job and yeah. they could not get their commitment, but they got their down payment back. But that is the only it only happened once. And I think it's only happened to me once in 21 years as well. And that was when someone was a school teacher and they went from a W-2 to a W-9 employee midstream two weeks before the closing and they couldn't get their mortgage contingency. And at that point, I think both of our our clients got their money back, uh, their deposits back. But just to kind of reiterate what a contingency is and how they're viewed, a contingency for a buyer when you're making an offer creates security and it creates a little bit more, uh, it creates security for you. So a mortgage contingency creates security whereby you get your deposit back if you don't get a mortgage commitment. Secondly, your home inspection contingency does the same thing. I've put $1,000 down with my offer. And if my home inspection doesn't come back satisfactory, I get that back. So that creates security for a buyer. What it does for the seller is create doubt. So if you view it from the opposite end of the transaction, uh, a contingency actually creates doubt in the eyes of a seller because they're like, well, what do they find that an outlet doesn't work? Are they going to walk away at a home inspection? Or what if they don't have a, uh, uh, or they don't get their mortgage? That creates doubt for them. So that's just a quick little one-on-one on contingencies. So thank you for that question. Uh, looks like we have another question from Augusta. That's a good one. Yeah. How about buying contingent on selling? Uh, So in a competitive situation, uh, you know, your offer is going to be evaluated against every other offer. And so that is a risk to the seller in terms of having a contingency to sell. So typically we try to avoid that. And so Bunny kind of talked a little bit about some of those different ways that we can go about trying to do so um, in terms of, you know, if we can tap into the equity of your home in order to, you know, be able to put that down payments. Um, as well as, you know, if we are able to get your home ready to sell very quickly, um, we, can, we can hopefully get it through it, uh, an offer process in terms of having an accepted offer and then purchase and sale, which gives you the assurance that we're going to be moving forward with that sale so that we don't have to put a contingency to sell in our offer. Um, but so you know, Eric, I think, Fa- I think um, Augusto was actually asking about whether, how about a contingency to purchase a mm-hmm. home? when you're selling. So if a seller puts in there, this sale is contingent on us finding another home. Mm. Bunny, you asked me about this last week, my friend. Okay, (laughs) which one was that, Randall? (laughs) Uh, Bunny called me last week and said, Randall, I've got a client that found a house, but the listing disclosure says that this sale is contingent upon the seller finding suitable housing. I'm lost. <laughs> what? <laughs> you don't remember that? Because I think what I told you was this, and I'll have to be very blunt. Forgive us for being so transparent. I told Bunny, it depends on what your client uh, situation is. But I said, if it's just an average thing, I would tell my client to run. Because you don't know if that seller is ever going to find a home. And do you want to lock yourself into a situation where a seller could go, eh, I've been looking for three and a half months, I can't find anything. And so, and then how many houses has your client then missed out on being able to make a purchase on? So that's how I would count, counsel a buyer looking to make a purchase of a home that had a contingency to find okay. a home. Right. right, but I recently did have an offer accept, accepted that they did have a contingency to sell their house. Um, 
And one of the reasons why I think why that they accepted the, the, my, the, my buyer's contingency to sell their house is because the house that my buyers were purchasing had been on the market for a while. Mm. So the sellers were a little bit more anxious to get, a, get an offer on their property. And I also had to provide a market analysis of my, of my buyer's home to let them know that they had a very valuable property that I had that I was fully confident was going to sell first week in the market, and it did. So I guess to answer that question, it depends on the situation. Yeah. Um, but in most cases, we try to avoid contingency to sell. Yeah. Yeah, and it's actually, I don't know if you guys are picking up on this out there, but to reiterate what Eric just said, and Bunny, every situation is different, right? Mm -hmm. So we have had offers accepted representing our buyers on homes with a contingency to sell, depending on the home that it was. I sold a home in Hyde Park a number of years ago. It had been sitting on the market for a long time. It wasn't terribly desirable. My buyers are like, I'll take it. If they'll take an offer uh, that has a contingency to sell, they are more than willing to because they had a home in a very desirable location and that really worked for them. So it happens, every single situation is different. So what we don't wanna do is discourage you from, you can't do this or you can't do that or you have to do this or you have to do that because working with somebody through this process to really sit down and be a counsel, right? And rely on our experience and what we've been able to do in the past to help you get to your goals in the future. So sure. great question. Yeah. Does anybody else have any other questions? Please feel free to throw them in the chat or on the Q and A. <laughs> Thank you for that, Juan Augusto. Well, if there are no more questions, we'd love the opportunity and want to say thank you for attending tonight and would love the opportunity to really sit down. Um, Eric, Bunny? Oh, yeah, we would love the opportunity to have a conversation with you, talk about what your, what your desires are, what your concerns are. Um, send us an email us. Yeah. Um, send us a private message. Um, let us know how we can how we can help in any way we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like Bunny was saying, you know, this is something that we do all the time in terms of helping buyers and sellers alike and coordinating this process with you. So, we'd love to sit down and have a have a strategy session with you to yeah. try to understand what the best path forward is. Right, and you know, I, I've walked. I talked to a lot of people that they're not ready to buy, buy or sell right now, but it is in their grand scheme and in their plan. So there is a lot of preparation to do and um, we'll answer any question happen any way we can. <laughs> Nothing too big or too little. We can and if you, <laughs> yeah, and if you're looking to make this move in the near future, very snarkily, I'd like to say, start packing because the better we can make your house look and the better we can present it to the buyers out there, the more money ends up in your pocket and the more you have to spend on the next house that you're purchasing. And I think you'll be in a, in a better position for it. So um, thank you. Everybody. We also let people know that through the pandemic, we're not only just selling in Jamaica Plain, Rosa, like our local Boston area, we've actually been able to help people in the South Shore and North Shore outside of the city. Um, it's a changing world. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. It really is. I've actually been really interested to see where everybody has been going. Um, we do have a foothold in the city um, and in these neighborhoods, but because of the lack of inventory, what we've been seeing people do and where we've been seeing people go has been really exposing us to a whole fun new market as well, which has been really? great fun. Yeah. Yeah, so being down on the South Shore, being out in the Western suburbs, um, being up on the North Shore, working in um, neighborhoods like Medford and Somerville and, and all of those areas to help our clients kind of find the homes that are right for them and uh, kind of get, get on with their lives <laughs> in many ways. Yeah. So. Great. Fantastic. If there's Anything else you'd like to add? I think we are all done for this evening. Thank you everybody for attending and we look forward to helping you out in the future. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Brian, we will be in touch if you're still there and uh, be able to schedule a time. So thank you so much. We, I believe I was looking in our, um, in our database and we have your number and your email address and we'll be following up shortly. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night.